morning, everybody. It's Tom Christie back in the painting studio, and this will be session one of painting this Widgeon Drake gunning decoy. If you didn't see the carving series, there are four uh, sessions that show you how to carve this Drake Widgeon from beginning to end. Those I've done previously. Now we're going to start the painting of this uh, Drake Widgeon. And it's going to be a gunning paint job, so a relatively simple paint job, uh, one that's easy to repair and fix. Uh, but hopefully it'll be helpful to those of you that want to take a shot at, at painting your own gunning decoys or creating your own gunning decoys. If you're enjoying my channel and getting value out of it, please hit the subscribe button. That helps me out. Uh, it doesn't cost anything. It doesn't commit you to anything. It just uh, helps me out as I continue to build this channel for de decoy and wildfowl carvers. All right, let's bring the camera in closer. And uh, I'm going to start by putting kind of a foundational coat over the primer. And we'll talk about that as we go. Welcome back. All right, the first thing we want to do or that I want to do for for the way that I paint a gunning decoy is put a little bit of a texture on the bird as a foundation for some of the painting techniques that will follow. And that foundation is made of Liquitex heavy body acrylic paint right out of the tube, burnt umber mixed with Liquitex gesso and uh, into this kind of a little thinner than toothpaste consistency and I'm going to paint that on the bird and then use a synthetic sponge this is just cheap packing material sponge to put a little bit of a texture on the bird so we'll get going on that I'm going to do all of the bird except uh, no texture on the bill we want to keep it nice and uh, smooth so I'm going to use a kind of a one inch wide brush. I'm going to start with the head. I'm going to paint right over the eyes. And uh, we can use an X-Acto later to take material off the eyes without scratching the glass. So I'm putting a pretty liberal coat on here and we just want to work in areas at a time because this we don't want this material to dry before I get it textured. So I'm going to do about that much and then I'm going to put a little bit on the uh, palette. And then take my sponge and work that material into the sponge so that it's consistent throughout and then I'm going to use that and just dab it on the bird and this I'm going to go back and forth until I get a nice consistent texture on the bird. This does a couple of things. It gives the body, the feathered areas of the bird a little more texture so a little softer look overall and some contrast to the smooth bill. And I like that look, and it also gives me a foundation for some of the dry brush and damp brush techniques that we'll use for blending on top of this. And I'll explain more about that later. So I'm going to do this on each area and kind of cover the entire bird, with the exception of the bill, and then I'll come back. Just a note, since this head is tucked low to the breast, it's very difficult to get in under there. So I've cut a little piece of sponge to make it easier to get in there and get a little texture in that area under the bill. Here's just a quick view of the textured bird. And I went uh, around the texture two times just to get uh, and drying in between. It just gives you more consistency in the texture, I think, going over it a couple of times. And then I went ahead and used the same material to paint with a filbert brush, a nice smooth brush. To keep the bill smooth, but go ahead and put a base coat on the bill. Now we can do some layout work. All right, I've done a little layout work. 
got the eye patch kind of in place. Notice it tucks really close under the eye and drops down the cheek. And it's fairly narrow at the front and widens up as it goes to the back. And then the eye patches kind of meet in the center at the back before you get to the back of the head in this position. And then I've got the uh, tertials located here. The primaries I'm going to tuck in here because they're not raised at all. And then really was working to find out where do the uh, scapulars stop here because this is all going to be vermiculated and this upper side of the side pocket going into the head here is all vermiculated so I'm going to comb that vermiculation in these areas. So we'll do that next before we start laying paint on the bird. There's also a little bit of vermiculation that runs right along the, the front of the neckline here and I'm going to try to comb that in as well and tie that into this vermiculation here. All right, I'm going to go in sections. I've got a nice wide brush. I'm going to start on the scapulars. And I'm using that same material that we sponged on the for the base coat. And just laying on a little thickness here in the scapulars. I'm going to cut it off at the cape and then do the cape separately, I think. It depends on how fast I can work because this material, you can't allow it to dry. If it starts to dry, you're in trouble because it'll start uh, getting really messy real fast. So I'm taking this down to the white patch here. We just need enough material that the comb will be able to leave some and give us that vermiculation pattern we're looking for. So I'm loading this whole area up because I think I can comb it relatively quickly. Let's start there. Particularly on the edges, you need a little more material. It tends to fade out or away. I've got just kind of an intermediate level comb in terms of finer coarse. So I'm going to start back here. Kind of follow my line so I'm not dragging that material out into the other, into the tertials. And I've got a paper towel and I'm wiping off as needed. So if my comb gets too loaded up, I can just wipe off. So I'm doing a little bit of back and forth. Wipe that off. Back and forth. You, I went over that area three times because it was gapping a little bit and I wanted a nice clean line with the vermiculation. And sometimes if you just go back over it, that takes care of it. Sometimes not. You may have to add more uh, material. looks a little thin up here so I'm just going to add a little bit of material so we get a good clean comb on the edge there. You can see how I went back over that area. Wipe off.
I'm going to put a little more material right in the corner here. So I've got material to work with. I'm also dipping my comb in water periodically and that helps clean off the comb. Okay, that's pretty good. Looks pretty good on that area. This is another thing I like to do is uh, just use a brush. If you've kind of combed into an, another area, you can just use a brush to knock it down a little bit. Okay. I think we can go from this direction and comb this cape area. Try to stay in the camera angle here. It's really borderline because uh, this material is just beginning to dry. So it's a little, little risky. I just need enough material on here to leave some material behind. Let's see if you can see that. I'm just going across the cape now, right up to the head. I need more material in there. Right in there. And I'm just tying that into that combing that I've already done. That looks pretty good. I just want to clean a couple spots up here. And luckily this material is still wet enough that I can go back through it and kind of tie it into that other combing that I just did. That was close, borderline. Okay, I am going to stop there and then we'll do that separately. But I'm going to go back to my brush and take out this little over comb area so that's knocked down we'll let that dry and then we can comb over it comb over all right while this is still wet i need to go in this direction i'm showing almost all of this combing because i think it you know, there are different challenges <laughs> in each section. And uh, I thought by showing some of those areas that I run into that need addressed, it might be helpful to show those as well. So I'm going right up to the head there, tying into that material that's still wet on the cape. Picking up these scapulars down to the side pocket. I'm going to end it right there. Okay, let's comb through this, wet the comb, clear it off. Start back here.
Now, the comb was too loaded there, so it started just leaving too much material on the bird. So you just wipe it off, go back through that area, and now it's pulling more material off and leaving a, a cleaner line. Trying to give a little shape to these, that vermiculation kind of bends around the feather as you go. This is a gunning decoy. We're not trying to be super accurate, but as long as we're combing through it, I like to try to follow the feather flow. Now this way we can go all the way across here into the side pocket. Coming out of that area, trying to do some zigs and zags, keep some sort of a irregular pattern going. I need a little more material right down here. And you learn that through experience. The other thing I'm seeing here that I need to take care of is uh, I slapped some material into this white area and I don't want a big ridge there. All right, let's go. Too wet, the comb was too wet, so it starts to just flow material rather than pull it off. I'm a too thin. Gonna add a little. You just make these adjustments kind of on the fly, but you have to make them quickly. As, as I've said before, before this material dries. Need a little more down there. That looks better. I'm going to flip the bird around again, tie into the cape. I'm gapping again there, so I'm going to add a little material. Get a good clean comb, kind of tie into the cape marks there, and then take it on out. It's kind of tough up against the head here. I'll show you that in a second. Got pretty good in there. This, you can see, is a little gap in that combing. So while it's still wet, I can just add a little more in there, clean the comb, go over it one more time. Still messy. I'm going to add material right up against the head there because it's just not deep enough the way it is. One more time. That's much better. I've got a little material on the head here. I'm just going to fade that out so we don't have a blob of paint there. Same here. 
I'm going to fade these out because I'm going to come back and comb over that area when we do the side pockets. All right. Just another detail. You can see how these kind of bend around as you start approaching the head and neck area so that they tie into these that are going down below and they'll tie into this band of vermiculation we want to comb around the neck. All right, I know that was a long session, but I think to learn combing, those are some of the finer points that I will, I hope are helpful. This combed paint is thick, so I'm gonna use a hair dryer to speed up the drying process. Okay, now I want to hit this little band of vermiculation around the neck. So I'm going to use a little filbert and kind of keep it thin near the neck and fade it out as it goes out on the breast. But we need enough material on there to leave some combing marks. Oops. I'm going to try to do this side first. So pretty heavy there and then fade it out. I got to get an angle on this thing and hopefully you can see this. I'm going to start here and I'm going to do a lot of up and down zigzags just to convey that this is vermiculation. And then tie it around into this area that we combed previously. Come it like that. I'll take a little brush and uh, fade that out a little so we don't have any hard lines on the edges. Now I'll go pick up this area on the other side. All the combing material is still wet. I'm tying into those from the other side and then taking it on over to this side. Got to get some paint off there. Too thick. Just like that. Knock down the edges again so we don't have hard lines out there. That little detail is maybe more than you want to put on a gunning decoy. Uh, I just wanted to demonstrate it so that if you want to do it, you know how I do it anyway. Now we can go on down the sides and it's just this upper area of the side pocket that has vermiculation on a widgeon drake. 
So kind of where I have penciled in here. So <laughs> it's hard to get an angle on this stuff. I'm going to make it heavy near the top. So we can pull nice clean lines in up there and then fade it out as I get down to this line and that'll make the combing fade away down there, which is what we want. So I'm just thinning up the combing material down below as we start to head down. And it wraps a little bit around the end of the side pocket there, so you can see the areas that are wet. Just thickening up the paint in a few areas. And then just pulling it into the texture down below fading it out. Okay, I'm going to start back here. Kind of bend around the side pocket and then pull through that area that I thinned up the paint and just make it disappear. Clean off the comb, keep going, just kind of bending these around in arcs on the side pocket. There's not much vermiculation left up here. It gets a little narrower as it gets to the front of the side pocket and starts bending around towards the breast feathers. Kind of like that. And I can take a brush and kind of knock these down so we don't have any harsh little snags down there and just fade it into the texture below it. Okay, we'll do the other side. Same way. All right, I want to start by mixing the body base color, this dusky rose color that'll go on the majority of the body of the bird. And that is a mixture of about 70% white gesso, about 15% brown earth, 5% raw sienna, 5% raw umber, and 5% ultramarine blue. Gives us this pink, but a, more of a rose pink color. And I'm going to paint that on the majority of the bird back to the uh, scapulars there, the side pocket. So we'll get that started. Okay, I've got that color and I'm just going to block in the parts that we talked about, the side pockets. I'm painting right over the combed vermiculation. We'll come back and highlight that in a later step. Also going to paint the scapulars, including that vermiculation. I'm just painting right over these areas that will eventually be off-white as well, because that'll be an easy change. All right, I'll get those areas painted and then we'll come back. 
for the breast base color, we want it to be a little more of a plum value, I'll call it. So I'm adding a little diox purple, just a touch, and a little ultramarine blue to give it more of a plum color. So I'm going to paint that on and then blend it into the side pocket color as we come around the breast to the side pocket. It's pretty subtle, but you definitely see that little darker value on the breast of the Drake Widgeon. So again, as I get over here to the side pocket, I'm just lightly brushing to kind of blend that into the lighter value on the sides. Once that color dries, it darkens slightly. You can see a little bit of a difference between that plum breast and lighter side pockets. I've mixed up some off-white with about 90% gesso and let's say 95% gesso and 5% raw umber just to tone the bright white down a bit. And I'm going to use that to paint in the rear side patch areas here on the rump and also paint in these white wing patches. For the head base color to make this kind of buff tan, I'm using 80% uh, gesso, 10% raw umber, 10% raw sienna. I'm going to paint these areas under the eye stripe. And this will take a couple of coats. Now I've penciled in the quill on the tertials, and we're going to paint the lower section of each of these tertials carbon black. And we're also going to paint this rump area carbon black, also underneath. Just a quick view of uh, the updated painting after black. So the lower half of the tertials, this rump area, top and bottom. And I also paint the edge of the tail since it's pretty thick, paint that black. And from a distance that tends to fade into the rump and uh, the tail doesn't look quite so bulky as if it were all a light color. Okay, we've got those kind of pieced together. I want to move up to the head, put in the crown color, base color and the eye patch base color next. For this light patch cotton top, I'm going to use warm white. 90% of that, a little bit of the gesso mixed in, and just a touch of yellow oxide to make it kind of a creamy color. Not, not bright yellow, but just soft, creamy color. And uh, then we'll paint that onto the top of the head. This will definitely take a couple of coats, two or three. We're going to follow this line up and over. It's a little bit of the face color that goes up and over the eye there. So I'm going to use the edge of my brush to kind of do a, a little bit of a blend on that line between the two colors. Just to soften things a bit. And then that goes back and kind of fades out the center of the head back here. So I'll get that, give it a couple of good coats and then we'll come back and do the eye stripe base coat. I put just a touch more of the yellow oxide in the blend up front here. It tends to get a, a little bit of a stained look and then fades into the 
kind of soft white on top. For the eye stripe, I'm going with 90% phthalo green, then darken with carbon black to make this very dark, almost black value as a base for this eye patch. And I'm using a little angled brush to get into these tight spots. And then I can use the edge of the brush to kind of make that line soft a little bit between the, the colors, between the dark of the eye patch and this face value. So I'm scrubbing back and forth just to try to get a, a softer line there than just a hard painted line, just to give it a little softer look. And it's quick to do, it just helps convey a little more softness. And then that eye stripe goes close under the eye in front of the eye and then it's relatively narrow to begin with and then widens out as it goes to the top here and then both eye stripes kind of converge back here and the rear of the crest is dark or rear of the head i'm going to do the same thing up here is use the edge of the brush without much paint on it and just do a little bit of a soft softer looking blend between the light and dark there. I'm going to do the same thing up here and just do a little bit of a softer blend between the light and dark. Don't want to spend too much time on it but a little softer than just a hard edged line between those two colors. I'll get the other side done and then we'll come back. For the upper part of each tertial, I'm using a, a mix of white gesso with burnt umber and just a touch of carbon black to, to gray it up a bit and just painting that and we'll paint the top of the tail that same color. So I'm just going into each of these and kind of piecing in the remaining tertial the way it fits in here. We'll paint each of those tertials and the top of the tail this light gray value. Okay, the primaries, I'm going to block those in with the uh, burnt umber, just lightened a bit with that gray tail and tertial mix. I want these to be a little bit more of a brown value. So I'll get those blocked in. Under the tail, I'm going to use that same gray value that we used on the top of the tail. Just block this in. For the bill base color, I'm using uh, gesso with just a touch of cobalt blue and then a touch of carbon black to kind of take it more in the blue-gray value. Just 
gonna coat the entire bill with that mix. All right, that's a good place to stop. We've got all the base colors laid on the bird, and in, in uh, session two, we'll get to some of the details. All right, we'll call that a wrap on day one or session one of painting the Drake Widgeon Gunner. We've got all the base colors laid in, and in the next session, we'll begin to develop some of the detail. There won't be a ton of detail, but we'll, we'll get that iridescent look to the eye patch. We'll highlight the vermiculation, do a little bit of feather development, detail the bill, or at least paint some markings on the bill, and we'll be done. So we should be able to finish it up in session two. Until then, Tom Christie signing out. Thanks for tuning in.